Uh, I went to St. Louis, Missouri, which is kind of the south, but not Texas. So, yeah, now for the regularly scheduled joke. We've got an agenda. Uh, yeah, uh, I uh, made back to work uh, Monday. I only took uh, one day off for uh, the extended weekend to go to St. Louis. And uh, I, I was uh, getting caught up on emails, uh, as you do uh, when you're out of the office. And then I get to two of them from the same person. I have to say, uh, did you get what you needed here? And they said, no. It's like, all right, I'll send it to you. And I was a little disgusted that I still had to do it, but I guess I should be thankful for all the things that got done for me when I wasn't there. Unfortunately, that is the attitude when you're in corporate America and you can be short on staff is, oh, they'll be out only one day. Uh, they can do it when they get back. It's like, uh, that's almost motivation to be out longer than that, so then it has to get done for you. I wish I was making that up. Uh. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to St. Louis. Plenty of stories about that. Uh, I, I wasn't thrilled about the flight schedule, but uh, what are you going to do? I mean, I, I wanted a, a free trip on Southwest Airlines. I had enough uh, miles for that. So it's like, all right, the red flight from MSP to St. Louis. That means morning flights both times. and. Uh, going down there, they meant getting up at 4 a.m. for a 6 a.m. flight. I am usually not up that early, but you find a way to make it work, and I did. It just meant uh, retiring a little earlier for the night. Uh, uh, but uh, even more uh, memorable was uh, when I was coming back, uh, I was at St. Louis Airport, and uh, uh, just uh, ahead of me, uh, was a teenager getting hugged by his mom. And I, then I had asked him how old, 15. It's like, oh, well, uh, eventually I said, uh, be thankful that mom still cares because uh, I was the type, uh, I was from the type of family like um, what Jay Leno said about Johnny Carson, the typical Midwest family. We love you, but we don't have to tell you. Yeah, I wish I was making that up too. But at the same time, I even said to a teenager was that uh, I'm north of 40 and sometimes dad still worries about me saying, oh, uh, you go back to see the Iowa Hawkeyes play football. That's where I went to college, Iowa City. And he's still worried that something's going to happen during the football traffic on game day. It's like, dad, I'm a careful driver. I mean, I haven't had to make an insurance claim in years. Uh, do you think that uh, is a rampant thing to see 20 car pileups uh, on the way to a college football game? I haven't heard of that yet. Uh, uh, so there was that, and then when I landed in St. Louis, I didn't know I, what I'm getting into, uh, at least at that airport, because I'm there often enough. And, I don't know if it happens in any other airports, but uh, they have, um, I guess it's best known as uh, free speech tables, where people might try to uh, get donations for whatever they have there. And they put up a sign saying, uh, First Amendment right and all of that. Uh, well, there were two different uh, tables, not that close to each other. Um, and with one of them, I just uh, walked past, and I could tell he was trying to wave me over. And then I went the other direction, same thing. And I mean, I wasn't all that close to him. Uh, and I wasn't approaching him either. I was well over six feet away. And then I had a snappy comeback for him, uh, saying, uh, you know what, dude? The USO has a table, too. And they're trying to wave people over like you are. And I, there was a, a young girl there, younger than me anyway, couldn't see her, but I heard her saying, Thank you! Have a good flight! It's like, hmm, does that mean I'm a rare one? I have the courage to call somebody out like that? I guess so. Uh, I understand sometimes you have to be aggressive about things, but uh, there's still a case of what works and what doesn't. Uh, well, I did more than just watch baseball games while I was in St. Louis, although that's the reason why I do the uh, annual visit there. Uh, I uh, like to run a museum while I'm there, and this time I had enough time to see the Economy Museum, which is inside the Fed Bank down there. 
because they're not open on weekends. It's like I got time to fill before I can check into my hotel because uh, I got there kind of early. Uh, before I'm usually at work because 6 a.m. flight. Uh, so uh, I like how I learn something whenever I'm at museums. But it's also a reminder of uh, the subjects you don't talk about in front of my old man because we were at the I was at the Fed Bank. And I can remember when I was a kid, and the uh, chairman of the Federal Reserve was named Paul Volcker. And this was at a time where there was soaring inflation, kind of like what we're dealing with now. And I still remember my dad saying, yeah, Paul Volcker you know, takes a shit, interest rates go up. So it's like, yeah, I'm not telling my dad how I went to the Fed Bank and Paul Volcker was in some of these videos that I watched. I remember Alan Greenspan better as the Fed chairman because he was later on and uh, served in that uh, role a lot longer. Uh, and uh, one thing I saw there that I don't see up here was snack foods, uh, rap snacks. So I bought one. Why did I buy Cardi B? Because there are only two that I recognize, and that one was barbecue. The other one I recognized, the late Chris Wallace, Notorious Big, and that wasn't barbecue. <laughs> in recognition, people, and uh, I uh, have been listening to that Kate Bush song from 1985 lately that became popular thanks to Stranger Things, and I became interested in how 100 returnees, and it's like, yeah, it's a reminder of being a performer. Why? It's about exposure. Get your song in a popular movie or TV show, and it'll sell. Yes, that's what we're looking for as performers. Exposure, getting uh, discovered. So good luck to all of us on that. Well, uh, thank you. You've been great.